Hello, and welcome to another web learning episode where knowledge is shared. In this episode, I will show how to use the power consumption calculator to this part of the STM32 Cubemix. If you aren't familiar with the STM32 Cubemix, you should check out my other video that is shown in the pop up window or in the comments below. So let's start. I'll quickly start a new project and I will base my power consumption calculator on the project. As I said before, you can use the link below in order to see in more detail how to start a new project. So I'm clicking New Project. I'll use the STM32L0 demo board that I showed in previous videos also. I'll randomly select peripherals in order to do the power consumption calculator. Okay, so as you can see I've set few peripherals and as I said before it was randomly selected. If I go to the clock configuration I'll need to click yes in order for the clock system to check out and find what is the best solution. Again you can see it in my other video. As you can see it couldn't find any solution for some constraints. Then what I should do is use the HSE that's under RCC and as you can see it found the solution so let's start as you can see the power consumption calculator the few buttons all of them are disabled because we don't have any sequence table in order to start the sequence, we should first decide on what is our power supply. For this example, I use 3 volts. And now I can, I can select the battery. And I can choose any type of battery that is listed below. If I want to add a battery that is not listed, I click on Add Battery. It asks me for the battery name, the capacity, self-discharge, nominal voltage, max count current and max pulse current. All this information can be found in the battery data sheet. For this example, I'll use the first battery in this list. This is just for an example. After choosing the battery, you can have you can set the battery in series and in parallel. This will increase the amount of batteries that you have and the total voltage and milliamp per hour that you have. For example, if I'll add in series we can see that the nominal voltage increases and if we increase the in parallel we can see the total milliamp hour increases again for this example I just use one battery in the top window you can see the sequence and in the bottom window you can see the display of the sequence so let's start I click on the plus add a step First, I need to choose what power mode I'm going to use. In the microcontroller, we have different power modes, and it all depends on the microcontroller that you've chosen in the pinout or in the project itself. In this example, we can take a system that wakes up and does something for a certain amount of time and then falls asleep for another period of time. So we can start with run. And from the right, I can decide on which peripherals I want to use. I can either choose them manually or I can import them from the selected pinout that we used before. As you can see, it imported all the peripherals that I set and I don't need to choose anything. I can also remove some of them if I want to, depending on the power mode that I'm using. So after choosing the power mode and what peripherals are going to run in this power mode, I need to choose the power range. In this microcontroller, there are three different power range, high, medium, and low. This information can be found in the user manual. 
for example, in this user manual for this microcontroller, you can see that under dynamic voltage scaling management, there are the dif different types of ranges. There is range 1 and 2 and 3. The ranges will affect the microcontroller in the typical value of the voltage, the MAC frequency, and the VDD range. As you can see, in most cases, the VDD range of the microcontroller, the full scan, the only difference is that speed, the maximum speed that you can run the microcontroller. If we decide on range 1, you can see that the maximum frequency can be between user-defined and 32 MHz. It will, if we'll decide on range 2, also the CPU frequency is user-defined, but this time up to 16 MHz. If it's range 3, it will be user-defined up to 4.2 MHz. In this example, because I'm in run mode, I'll use range 1. I can decide where I'm running my code. Is it from RAM or from Flash? What type of VDD I'm using for the microcontroller? And the voltage stores. Is it battery or VBUS? After this, I need to choose the CPU frequency and the clock configuration. At this point, we can see that the step consumption is 8.8 .8 milliamps, that without peripherals it's 6.3, it means that the core takes 6.3 milliamps, the peripheral part is 2.5, again it does the calculation for you, and the maximum temperature is 103.81 that you can run, and the power consumption will be at this point. In the optional settings, we have a step duration and we have additional consumption. For example, if we take a project that we have the core and some peripherals, we can say that the microcontroller will run for 10 milliseconds. And if we have a GPS or other peripherals, they can draw, for example, another 10 milliamps. After deciding on how we want to run this step and setting all the peripherals and all the other information, we click Add. Now we can see that we have one step, the voltage and the rest of the information that we entered, the sequence time, the battery life estimation, 6 days, 7 hours, and the average consumption, it's 18.8 .8 milliamps. And this if the system is on the whole time. But the system is on for only 10 milliseconds. The rest of the duration we need to put it in some sort of low power mode. So we click plus again and we choose the power mode. For example, low power run. Again, we can add the peripherals and as you can see only the peripherals that can run in low power run are located in the peripheral list. For example, the ADC is not listed here. Again, we can choose them, remove them, change them, add them, and we can do whatever we want in the system. For this example, I'll remove all of them, and I will add only timer 6. Again, memory fetch type from flash, the voltage I'm running it, the voltage stores, the CPU frequency, because I'm in low power run, I can run the device even though it's in low power, low power. The duration, let's say 900 millisecond, and the additional consumption will be 1. I click add. Now you can see that the total sequence is 910 milliseconds because we have 10 milliseconds for the run mode and 900 milliseconds for the sleep mode. The battery life estimation will be 3 months 6 days. The average consumption will be 1.22 milliamps and the average DBIPS is 0 0.36. From this point we can change everything. For example we can change the battery. If 3 months is not enough we can increase the battery click OK 
and now we can see it will be 9 months. If the run mode is not enough, we can double click on this step and increase the duration for 20 milliseconds. And we can go on. We can also change if we have few steps, we can move them and change the step duration in the top step toolbar. We can also load the sequence, save a sequence, delete the sequence, we can display current sequence in the window, or we can do compare to current sequence with one from the PCs or IOC files that we generated before. I hope you enjoyed this short training. If you have any comments, leave them below. Please subscribe so you'll get notifications when I'm uploading more videos. Thank you.